Hi everyone, and welcome back to Jeremy's IT Lab. Back in February of this year, I posted this photo and hinted at something exciting coming soon. Well, I am proud to finally announce that I am collaborating with Checkpoint on a series of videos covering their Quantum Spark series, Next Generation Firewalls. Now, perhaps some of you, if you're new to the world of IT and cybersecurity, are not familiar with Checkpoint yet. Well, Checkpoint is one of the world leaders in the field of cybersecurity and has been for decades. They truly are one of the pioneers of the field. However, they don't only provide cybersecurity for large enterprises, and their Quantum Spark series of next generation firewalls, which I will be introducing, is designed for SMBs, small and medium sized businesses. According to Checkpoint, these firewalls, or security gateways, provide security for enterprises from 1 to 500 employees. And of course, there are different models within that range depending on the size of the business. So, for example, a small business with only a few employees might use something like this. Quantum Spark 5090 security gateway. And let me tell you, when I'm done making these videos, I'm throwing out this cheap one I got off Amazon and using this Quantum Spark for my home network. Since I run a small business, Jeremy's IT Lab, and I'm the only employee, a small device like this 5090 is perfect and covers everything I need from routing to switching to security to Wi-Fi. I'll get into some of the features of this device in this series of videos. But for now, let me just say that this device is in a totally separate league compared to that cheap one that I used that I got from Amazon. And for a medium sized business, maybe closer to 500 employees, you probably need something a little more powerful, like this Quantum Spark 1600 security gateway. The main difference between this 1600 and the smaller 1590 is throughput, the amount of network traffic it can handle. Additionally, a small business device like this 1590 is a one stop solution. So in addition to routing, switching, and security, it also acts as a wireless access point, which the 1600 doesn't. When these devices arrived, I was so excited I just ripped them out of the box, got them set up, and threw away the cardboard. So instead of an unboxing video, let's look at the already unboxed devices. Here's the 1590. Note that this logo is actually Checkpoint's old logo. They just recently rebranded. Here's their new one, which is much more sleek and modern looking in my opinion. Notice there are some LEDs on the front, which can be very helpful to indicate the status of the device. There are power, internet, management, Wi-Fi, and 4G LTE LEDs. That's right, this device supports 4G LTE, so it can serve as your network's router even without a wired connection to the internet. Or the 4G LTE can serve as a backup connection in case the wired connection to the internet goes down. Either way, it's a really great feature to have on a device like this. Notice on the sides there are two LTE antennas, and here there is a slot for the LTE SIM card. And in addition to the LTE antennas, there are four Wi-Fi antennas, so it serves as a wireless access point. And since I mentioned the antennas, here they are. The two LTE and four Wi-Fi antennas come in the box with the device, so let's put them on. Now I don't have an extra LTE SIM card to use but I could probably just use my phone SIM card to demonstrate LTE in another video. We'll see. I will definitely be using the Wi-Fi antennas though. Finally, let's take a look at the network ports in the back. There are three main types of network ports on the 1590, WAN, DMZ, and LAN. The LAN ports, these ones here on the left, connect to hosts on your internal network. The WAN port would connect to the outside world, for example, the internet. Then DMZ stands for Demilitarized Zone, and it's somewhere in between the two. This is where you would connect something like a web server you want people outside of your internal network to be able to connect to. These eight LAN ports here are switch ports. A small business device like this serves multiple roles, including switch, router, firewall, and wireless access point. So there's no need to buy a separate switch to connect wired devices to. You can just connect them directly to the 1590. The DMZ can either use a regular RJ45 UTP cable, or you can put an SFP transceiver here and then connect fiber optic cables. Which one you use would depend on the distance as well as the device you are connecting to on the other end. Note that the SFP doesn't come with the device. This is just a spare one I have at home. So that's the 1590. Like I said, perfect for a small business. However, a medium sized business will probably need a little bit more throughput than this can provide. So for them, this 1600 could be perfect. Let's take a closer look at the 1600. 
all of the interesting stuff is here on the front. On the left, there's a slot for an SD card. The 5090 had one also, by the way. I didn't point it out. You don't need to use an SD card, but if you need more storage on the device, it's good to have. Next, there are 16 UTP LAN ports. One interesting thing I noticed is that the numbering begins on the bottom port. Port 1 is down here, and then 2 up here, 3, 4, 5, etc. That's different from most other vendors. And in addition to the LAN ports, we once again have DMZ and WAN ports. Unlike the 1590, which had only UTP for the WAN port, the 1600 lets you choose between UTP or fiber for both the WAN and DMZ ports. But again, you need to have an SFP transceiver available to use these SFP ports. The 1600 also has a USB-C console port, in addition to RJ45, which is more common. There are also a couple USB ports, which can be used for storage, transferring files, for example to update the operating system, etc. And next to these ports, there is a factory default button. If you press this down with a pin, you can reset the device back to the factory defaults, which means the way it was when it was shipped from the factory. And finally, here is something I really like. The serial number is written on a little pull tab here, instead of directly on the chassis like most devices. Okay, before wrapping up this video, I just want to show some of the extras that came in the box with these devices. So first up is a SIM card pin. So if you're going to use the 4G LTE on the 5090, you'll want to use this pin to open up the SIM card tray. Okay, next also for the 5090 is a wall mount kit. So I'm going to use this just by putting it on my desk or somewhere in my apartment, but you can also mount it on the wall with these screws. Okay, next what is this? It is a console cable. So it's pretty normal for network devices to come with a console cable in the box, but in this case, I think it's extra important because as you saw on the devices, they have a USB-C console port and you might not have one of these lying around. So it's great that this comes in the box with the devices. And each device also came with a network cable, a uh, copper ethernet cable. So let's look at what's written on here, if I can get it to focus. Okay, so it says Cat5e, so that means this goes up to gigabit ethernet, one gigabit per second. And next to it, it says STP. What does that mean? That doesn't stand for spanning tree protocol. Um, it means shielded twisted pair. So UTP, unshielded twisted pair, is generally more common, but you can also use shielded twisted pair. The cables are a bit more stiff, but they protect more against electromagnetic interference than UTP cables do. Okay, the final thing I want to show are these uh, quick start guides for both the 5090 and the 1600. So let's take a quick look at the 5091 here. So basically, it just tells you how to power on the device, uh, check the LEDs to make sure it's properly powered on, how to connect it to the internet. If you connect the WAN port here to an external router, one that you're already using perhaps in your home, um, DHCP is already activated on this interface. So it should get an IP address and gain access to the internet without any particular configurations. And then it shows how to connect the PC to it so you can um, access the GUI and do some configurations. And on the final page here, it gives some information about registration and technical support, etc. So this is a great thing to come with the device um, to help you get started and help you get access to the device so you can actually configure it. Okay, that was a quick look at the Quantum Spark 5090 and 1600 next generation firewalls. Thanks to Checkpoint for sending me these devices, and thanks to you for watching. I'm really looking forward to covering some of the features of these devices over the next few videos. See you then.